Greetings and welcome to the 11th inning stretch, our first podcast, where we will be uh, previewing the divisions in each league. My name is Paul Leppi. My name is Al Schneider, which you can call me Schneids. <laughs> Greetings, Schneids. Um, so our first podcast, as we uh, already said, is going to preview each division. And then um, I want you to give a brief prediction um, for your World Series, uh, who's going to win and who will be in it. Uh, cool, cool. So let's start with the uh, AL West. I'll let you start. Go ahead. Um, all right. This is going to be probably a, a little controversial. Um, I'm kind of uh, I'm looking down at it now, and I'm feeling like the Mariners are going to make a good push. And really? The key, thing, the key thing for me for that one um, is they took out Logan Morrison with a trade, and then they signed Adam Lind, who's a little bit better defensively and offensively, a little bit better. Um, I feel like he's going to be a huge key for them. Um, and plus, they also brought, brought Iwakuma back. So, sure. And that's a huge push. And plus, I can't doubt, you know, Robinson Cano is one of my favorite players, so I can't take, keep him out. So, yeah, I'm thinking the Mariners are going to win the West. Um, but that whole division up and down, except for the Athletics, um, and even they can make a nice push they have before. But that division there is a, a – it's going to be a fun one to watch, personally, sure. for me. So, Here's the thing with me and the um, American League is there's not really any teams except for the A's that are just going to be absolutely terrible. Um, if you look at each division in every team, every team has a chance to compete. And by compete, I mean every team, every team has a chance to make the playoffs, which is uh, something you don't see very often. You know, in the National League, there are – five or six terrible teams. You have the Reds, Brewers, Phillies, Braves, Rockies, maybe the Padres, um, who you know are just going to be terrible and have absolutely no chance. Uh, but that, it's, well, not, it's not like that. Well, and the thing is, too, is like even the Braves for the first couple of months of the season last year were in a rebuild, but they were still mm-hmm. you know, winning. Well. Yeah, they were, in a, they were tops of their division because that division at, at all until like the last month didn't, didn't play well. And that's – in. The thing is, for me, is I think that that division is going to beat so much up on themselves. Sure. With all of that, I feel like the Mariners – I mean, everybody predicted the Mariners last year, but that was just because of, you know, Robinson going to first year. Swamp. I think that they made some key moves this year, brought back some key players that's going to be able for them to not sneak through because I think, you know, people are going to see it. It's not going to be something that's going to be, like, real sneaky. Um, I just I just feel like, with, you know, the club that they have, you know, you can't doubt Kyle Seager is a stud. Sure. Yep. Um. I don't know who – I honestly personally don't know who's been shortstop for them. It's been a kind of revolving door in the past. Yeah. Um, but you have an infield with Seager Cano, and then you have Adam Lynn, who's That's been a first. quiet a quiet first baseman who's been doing a really good job. And, of course, you have Nelson Cruz. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, and then Chris Iannetta went from the Angels to – the Mariners anyway. So, you know, they finally have a solid backstop that's going to be able to hit for them, hopefully, because Mike mm-hmm. you know, has been kind of rough. Pretty bad, yeah. In the past. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's you know, the way I'm looking at it is, you know, none of the other organizations really made any, like, super key moves. Um, you know, the Astros basically kind of stayed the same. Um, I mean, oh, they did sign Doug. So the Rangers, who I have, they're my prediction for the West, is, is the Rangers. They didn't make any key moves, but they're getting you Darvish back. And yeah, that, you, that's huge. And, and with you, Darvish, and Cole Hamels, um, and a rejuvenated Prince Fielder, hopefully, um, they have a couple young guys. And um, uh, what's his name? Uh, no, Elvis El- Andrews isn't there anymore. Who was their? Um, who was the middle infielder? Who was the second baseman? Uh, they have Altuve and Correa. No, that was the Astros. I- I'm talking about the Rangers. Oh, Rangers. Uh, Odor. Odor. That's Odor, right. Odor. Yeah. They have Odor. They have a yeah. full year of him. Um, they're they're they just seem like the most well-rounded team. Um, so well, and then like Delano De Shields was one of my going down the stretch was one of my favorite mm-hmm. players to watch. Sure, you know, not a, a same guy, kind of like Adam Lint. I mean, of course, he doesn't have the record, uh, the track record, but Delano De Shields has been. I mean, did a did a huge job for them being able to lead off and mm-hmm. super blazing speed. Which uh, I hope that he's manning center field for him this year because. Uh, their center fielder from last year is now uh, Leonis Martin is sure. with the Mariners right now. And actually, I just saw today he had a walk-off home run yesterday, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, like I said, it's going to be a pleasure to watch. I'm definitely – that's one of the divisions I'm going to pay attention to. I can't wait. I think it's going to be super exciting. But it, yeah, it'll my, be a pretty strong division, I think, except for the A's. Um, yeah. 
I could see any of the other three teams winning it, mm. or four teams winning it. Uh, no doubt. AL East. All, All right. right. So here's what I'm thinking. You know, the Blue Jays won it last year, and they kept a lot of their same players. Mm-hmm. You know, you have the reigning MVP um, and Josh Charlson, who just went completely crazy last year. Yeah. One of my – I'm a huge guy with defense. Obviously, you know, Robinson Cano is one of my favorite players. Josh Johnson plays some wicked third base. It's awesome to watch. Mm-hmm. They have Troy Chilowitzki. Um If he can say help, kind of, I think he's, yeah, if, he's that team. Oh, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But here's what I'm going to say. You know, I, I'm you know, talking up the Blue Jays. I really don't think that the Yankees – I think the Yankees will be there. I don't think that they'll win. Uh, it was it was exciting last year going down the stretch watching that. I'm not a huge Yankee guy. No. Um, uh, you know, at the Rays, you know, Longoria last year had an awful year for his standards. You know, he was kind of like the top tier guy. If they could get a couple o- offensive hitters, then 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 they could for sure win the division. I mean, they just don't have anything on offense. Oh no! Oh no doubt. But my pick is kind of rough. Uh, I'm my second favorite team in home baseball is the Red Sox. I love the Red Sox. Made some key moves. You know, having David Price and Craig Kim- Kimbrell is. You know, awesome. How you go out and make those moves is crazy. Uh, um, the Orioles, I'm kind of looking at you. Bringing back Chris Davis is a huge boost to that entire place. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, he strikes out a whole bunch, but hitting 50 bombs that, you know, go out of the state, you know, and hit Texas is, you know, ridiculous. Um, but I got to go, you know, I'm hoping for a healthy Dustin Pedroia. You know, I'm going with my team, the Red Sox. I think that they're going to push ahead and they're going to win it. Um, Hanley playing first base, this thing is super exciting. Uh, you know, you can't put anybody at first base, but a guy you know who played shortstop for many, many years and who was stellar at it, I think going to first base is awesome. Um, but yeah, I'm going Red Sox. I think it's gonna be great. I can't wait. I'm super excited. I'm hoping that rivalry between the Yankees and Red Sox grows a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I'm super excited for that. That's gonna be another one of those divisions that I'm like, you know, all these divisions are good. There's not one I really don't care about. The NL West, I'm you know kind of iffy about. You know, I just you know, not a huge Dodger guy or uh, nothing like that. So, I mean, that one's, yeah, okay. In the East, NL East is not too bad, but all the AL uh, divisions are going to be awesome to watch. I can't Absolutely. wait. But, yeah, Red Sox are going to be my top team, and I think with a close second is the Orioles. For okay, me. interesting. So you have the Blue Jays nowhere to be seen. Hmm? Well, and that's the thing is that the division is so – that division is just like the AL West. There's so many teams that can win it. Yeah. The only team you don't see really winning it is the Rays, and even they played well the first yeah. couple months of the season yeah. last year. It's it's. I'm not saying the Blue Jays won't be there, um, because I think that they're going to be tied. For me right now, they're really tied with second with the Orioles. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel like the way that the Orioles go about their business is kind of like the Cardinals. You know, it's nice and quiet. They do their thing. You know, it's stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'm thinking. You know, you might see the Blue Jays later. My wild card prediction. You know, I'm not, you know, not saying that they won't be there. You know, uh, you know, but for the for winning, for some odd reason, it's just teams play harder when they're closer to winning it, and then it almost seems like when they're in the wild card, they kind of die off. Like when there's no chance for them to win, the division teams die off. And I'm not saying the Blue Jays will be there because the Blue Jays have all the potential in the world to win the division. You know, I just. You know, the thing is, is if Tula can stay healthy, which I think he'll be able to, uh, they're changing the turf. They're taking out that turf and putting yeah, it in the grass. Yeah, that was a disaster. Um, you know, they lost, you know, Ben Revere. Uh, I know that. I don't know who's playing second for them. Um, I think it's Travis, something Travis, I think is his last name. Um, he's really good. Tulo, I just, you know, I I won't feel com- – he had a first full year, I believe, last year. He had that kind of shoulder problem. That almost looked fake to me when I saw the injury, but um, you know, if he can stay healthy the whole year and put up good numbers, especially the playoff spot, which is a weird place for him to be. You know, I didn't. You know, I think he's that's the only team he bat lead off for. Yeah, to be honest. And you got Joey Bats. You know this. You know, damn. You know, I'm talking myself up to pick them for for first or wild card spot right now. But you know, it's gonna be a fun one. I still think Red Sox with Orioles and Blue Jays right there. Uh, so yeah, my team is Red Sox. I got the Blue Jays. You know, I I think um, well, one they have a new new closer in Drew Storen, who was with the Nationals, but the Nationals are kind of a train wreck, uh, unless you're Bryce Harper. Um, <laughs> um, 
I think if they can get a full year out of Tulowitzki and a full year out of Encarnacion, uh, that 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 lineup uh, one one to eight one to nine is is about as good as it gets. I'd say they're right behind the Cubs for the best offense in the league. Um, yeah, I mean their offense is just still super powerful. And when you, ha- I mean, just 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 go ahead and look at it. Yeah, Encarnacion, Batista, uh, Russell Martin, who's a stud of a catcher that no one ever seems to talk about. Um, their second baseman is uh, Ryan Goins. I guess he's. Uh, he, he'll, oh yeah, he'll yeah. be in his first year, first full year, yeah. and we're at second base. Uh, the reigning MVP and Josh Donaldson. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if no other team, you know, if another team wins it. But uh, at the same time, I just think that it's the Blue Jays' division to lose because the Rays, like you said, not quite there. Um, the Red Sox. The problem I have with them is that they have absolutely no pitching behind David Price, in my opinion. Um, th- I mean, it's the David Price, and then who who do they throw out there? Uh, Joe Kelly. Well, my, my thing is that is is the thing is is I mean, okay. So uh, the way I look at it is you know like last year the Cardinals masterful pitching offense was really low, but when you got to the Cubs, who else did they have besides Jake Arrieta? Because I'll be honest with you, I love John Lester. John Lester is always one of my favorites, but he did not pitch very well. You know, he did not have John Lester numbers last year. I think he, you know, I think he had one game over uh, 500. I think. Um, sure. Yeah, it, it wasn't all that great. I mean, he was yeah, solid. Ex- he was ex- average. Exactly. So you had a team that had an awesome offense with crap pitching that beat the Cardinals and went off to the next level, got destroyed by the Mets. Yeah. The Mets had hitting and pitching. Yep. It was crazy. So, you know, I, I understand where you're coming from. There's no wrong answer, mm-hmm. you know, until the standings actually come out, you know, and that's just prediction. But, you know, I understand where you're coming from. There's no bad pick. Blue Jays or Red Sox is not a bad pick. Especially, you know, you got Dave Ortiz's last year. I just think there's something about that. That's true. Yeah, there might be a little, there might be a little magic in that last year. I, I I could totally see that. That's totally possible. Okay. Yeah. yeah. AL Central. Yeah. We got again controversial pick. Yeah. I'm feeling I'm kind of feeling the whole uh, uh, Indians thing. To be okay. honest with you, uh, man, uh, just you know, Francisco and Doris went into a nice, uh, good season. I believe. Mm-hmm. An awesome shortstop to play for him. You got Jason Kipnis, who's just no doubt a he's still underrated. Base. He's so underrated. He's, he's so underrated. It's it's crazy. You have and then you have uh, Carlos Santana, who has literally played like everywhere. Yeah. You know, third base, first base, catcher. Um, he's good at you know, it too. Exactly. The team asked him, "Hey, can you play here?" And he's like, "Sure." You know, you know, I'll go do that. Uh, the cool thing about it is they signed. Uh, Napoli, who I think I believe should be their full time DH. If not, he's playing first base every day. Mm-hmm. And Carlos Santana will be the DH. Um, you know, I don't know who's playing third base for them. I, uh, you know, it's just one of it's just one of those teams that I think is specifically oriented around the people that are playing the positions. I think it's more of a clubhouse attitude. So they're gonna rally around everybody else, and they're just gonna go out and they're gonna play ball. Um, so yeah, I'm you know I'm going Indians. I, I can't wait. I'm excited. Let's go. Yeah, this is truly one of those one of those divisions for me that that anybody can win. I mean, if you flip a coin and tell me the Twins win the division, I wouldn't be surprised. You flip a coin and tell me the Royals are going to win again, wouldn't be surprised. I went with the White Sox, um, just because I I mean I don't I don't this is the pick that I'm not entirely confident in. But then again, like I said. Anybody can win. So at the same at, at the same time, the White Sox can entirely win the division. Um, I think Carlos Rodon, their number two or number three, uh, yeah, number two or number three starter. Uh, he's he's in his second full year in the league. He'll be really good. Um, Todd Frazier can't ignore that signing. Uh, their infield is now pretty good with Frazier and uh, Abreu at the corners, um, and they're. And the rotation, I, I think, is pretty solid with Quintana, uh, Chris Sale, and uh, Rodon. Um, one through three, they're, they are pretty decent. Uh, the back end of the rotation could use some work. Uh, I'm not sure Johnny Danks is, is the answer to that. Um, but any team can win it, and I, do, I don't know why. I, I'm just feeling the White Sox. Um, I mean, like you said, this is this is one of those divisions that any team can win. You're gonna find right. somebody that's gonna that's gonna. It wouldn't entirely surprise me to see um, three teams come out of this for the playoffs, just like the NL Central did last year. Um, 
but they all might beat up on each other, and there might only be one team coming out, and that one team may have 85 wins. Who knows? Oh, oh no doubt. My, and, and the thing is, too, is you know, a lot of people are going to ask why the Royals or Tigers. The Royals, I think, have a good team, and I think they're going to be good. I think the Royals are going to be mm-hmm. awesome. I'm so happy that both uh, Missouri teams are doing, you know, just aces right now. Sure. Uh, Tigers, my key player for the Tigers is if um, – Man, you know, mine blank right there. Um, their uh, DH from last year, the switch hitter. Um, oh, uh, Vic, uh, not Victor. Mar- yeah, uh, Victor Martinez. Yeah, V Mart. If he can, if if he can go back to not last year because last year was really bad, but the Fair. year before when he was in B, B, uh, MVP races, mm-hmm. I if he can do that, I think they'll be up there. He's my key player. He's older now. I'm not saying he can't perform. I watched him get a couple bombs here in spring training. He looks like he's in ready to go. Um, but he's my key player. If he does bad, I think the team does bad. Agreed. Um, I, course, I, you know, I, I, don't trust, I don't trust Justin Verlander with – I mean, I, I wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot stick. I no. mean, I, I, I don't think he's uh, down on it like he used to be. Exactly. Um, and he definitely would – if and if I had him, he definitely wouldn't be my ace. I'll just say that. He's definitely – you know, he could mm-hmm. be – he you know, third would probably fit him better, but he's definitely not the guy I'm rolling out there for opening day to try and win a ball game. You know, yeah. You know, there's so many other people you could go to for that. That's and that's another thing is it their pitching rotation besides Justin Verlander. How many people do you know from that the pitching rotation? You know, you have Anibal Sanchez. Anibal Sanchez, um, that's about it. <laughs> exactly. You know, no one else knows anything. You know, and of course you can't say, oh, Maggie does well. The team will do well because you know Maggie hits fifty bombs every year. So I mean, it's not like you know you have to worry about him. But I, yeah, I think B Martin's my key player for that one. But yeah, you know, mine's Indians, yours is White Sox. I don't think you can go wrong in this division. No, if I your team's in that one. I, I got the uh, Tigers projected rotation right here, and it's um, I'm not a big fan of it. They got Verlander one, Jordan Zimmerman two. Okay, Jordan Zimmerman pretty decent. I think we got. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. I don't know why you would have him opening starting day. But okay, three Anibal Sanchez, four Mike Mike Pelfrey, and five Derek Norris. <laughs> not yeah. I mean back end of the rotation. Not I'm not good. No. No, okay. not really. So, so now you have uh, two wild card picks. Um, touch up on each on each one and why you chose them. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, like I said, you know, we've all said that basically all of these divisions can anybody can win them, and that's what makes it hard picking these. Here's the thing. I'm, you know, it's really hard to argue against the Astros for a wild card spot. Yep, I but agree. But you there. can't. But you can't take anything away. For me, since I chose the Red Sox and I chose the Indians, you can't take anything away from the Blue Jays and Royals. Those are my two wild card spots. I think it'll be a fight down to the end. Sure. Like I said, you can have multiple people win a division, and you can have two win a wild card. You know, there's no more than that. It's going to be a battle. I think the AL is going to be fun. But you can't doubt. You know, Eric Hosmer. I'm waiting for him to be. You know, the 30 home run guy, 25 home I, run I guy. I think we all are. That's, and I think that's coming. You know, Mike Moustakas hit 22 last year. I think that's going to be awesome. Mike Moussaka is one of my favorite players. I'm a huge huge defense guy, and he plays good defense. Offense was a little rough. But other than that, I, yeah, I'm going Royals, and I'm going Blue Jays. Um, both offensive powerhouses. The Royals sure. have good pitching. It's not great pitching. I think it's about average. Sure. Um, so those are my two picks for that. Uh, there wasn't really too much, you know, that wasn't too hard to figure out for me, given the fact that my predictions for the, the winners were, you know, what they were. So, yeah, sure. I mean – I have the Indians for the same reasons you you said, um, and then I also have the Astros. I, you know, I I view the Astros as sort of the Cubs of the American League, and they're just going to get better and better and better. They didn't make any moves this year, okay? But did they need to? Not really, because their young core is in place, and you know they were <laughs> they had a pretty good postseason last year, all all things considering, all those young guys, um, and they're only going to get better. So well, was, they only, the only only move they made was Doug Fister. Right. But, right. I mean, they have the reigning uh, AL Cy Young. Um, they have, a, I, I think, a potential MVP candidate in uh, Correa, shortstop. Uh, Carlos Gomez, hopefully he can stay healthy for their sake. Um, they're, I think, a very well-rounded team. Plain and simple. No, no doubt. No okay. Doubt. I can't disagree with you there. So we got half the league done. Have to go. Uh, we'll start out with the uh, NL West. Uh, go ahead. This division, I think, is uh, it comes down to three teams. Um, 
no team is is dominant. Each team has their flaws. Um, but go ahead. You know what, how about you go first for the NL teams? I'm tired sure. of going first. Fine. Um, I'm going to go with the Giants for the NL West. Um, I would pick the Dodgers, but their pitching I don't think is a, is any good, other than Clayton Kershaw. Um, and and the Giants, uh, it's an even year, so there's probably got to be some magic going on there. Exactly. <laughs> um, Jeff Samarja. Um, I was hoping the Cardinals would actually sign him, but he obviously signed with the Giants. And if he can get that ERA back under like three eight, three seven, three eight, I think the Giants pitching is going to be straight up dominant with him, Cueto, Bumgarner. Um, and I think they have a pretty low key, awesome, awesome offense. Posey, Brandon Crawford is very underrated. Brandon Belt is just solid year in and year out. Uh, Matt Duffy is. Again, solid year in, year out. A solid 300 hitter. You don't see very many 300 hitters anymore. Um, and the Dodgers, I just, don't, I just don't see any pitching there. Um, and the Diamondbacks, maybe. Um, I think it all kind of rides on Paul Goldschmidt's shoulders. And that's a lot to put on a, one person. So I, I, I'm going to go with the Giants just because they're more well-rounded than the Dodgers in the, in, in the D-back. Okay. Yeah, you know, and I'm gonna follow you up on that one. I think the Giants, like you said, you know, they had they, you know basically revamped their offense or their uh, pitching rotation. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's always guys I root for. You know, just kind of like the low key guy is usually put up together about an average year. Yeah. Um, and the Giants currently got rid of one of them in Vogelsong. song. He actually went to the Giant or to the uh, uh, Pirates. But Bobo Song, you know, he's out. You know, he really, you know, he's not one of those guys, you know, if you're going on postseason runs that you depend on being your third starter. You know, fifth starter, yeah, you know, no doubt. Um, the thing is, is, he could have been a fifth starter with the Giants, but you don't know Matt Cain. And you don't have Linscombe either. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't did, and I don't even know. If, who did Linscombe I don't even sign with? Has I don't think yet. I, not that I heard that he signed with anybody, you know. And so, yeah, I'm going to follow you up with the Giants. You can't doubt, you know, Brandon Crawford's a stud shortstop. You know, and I think their key player is going to sound really crazy, but their key player for me is Joe Panic. Sure. Absolutely. They're, they're second baseman. And yep. the reason being is because Crawford is a defensive wizard, you know, and, and it's crazy saying that because, of, you know, Cardinal being Cardinal fans, both of us, you got the Wizard of Oz, but Brandon Crawford is a, is a wizard. The dude yeah. is, is awesome with what he does. Um, but. You know, what they say is true. If you're not comfortable turning double plays with people, you make different decisions. And when they brought in Tomlinson last year to play second base for him, it didn't look like they were comfortable in that, you know, in that thing. They made a couple plays uh, when they won the World Series. Panic and uh, Crawford did. That were spectacular. I don't think there's another double play combo that could have made them. And I'm even saying that with Colt Long and Peralta probably could not have made it. Sure. The, the, the key player for me, like I said, is, is Joe Panic. Um I think they need a different center fielder. I don't like Angel Pagan hitting or defensively really at all. I think defensively um, he's he's average, and he and offensively he's 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 just kind of there. Exactly, but and the thing is too is you know you're not your center fielder. If he's an average center fielder, that's better than having a below average center fielder. So I think he'll be, I think he'll be okay. You know, uh, I think if you're really gonna try and make things crazy, you should really. Trying to different center fielder, yeah. but there's not too many big name center fielders. You know, you know, you have your Mike Trout, you have your Andrew McCutcheon, but besides that, you know, there's really no one's baby. I mean, that's about it. Exactly. You know, you're not really, you know, uh, getting anybody else that's gonna, you know, that's gonna really make, do make much of a difference. You know? No, yeah, I yeah, you know, I agree. So yeah, you know, I'm thinking the Giants, and like you said, the Diamondbacks, you know, made a lot of key moves, but you know, you run it on well, Paul Gold, um, Paul Goldschmidt. Um, and the Dodgers don't have pitching. Padres did the whole fire sale last year. And that was a disaster. Everybody in, and that was a huge disaster. So they shipped almost everybody out. Um, <laughs> Rockies won't be good, I don't think, no. ever. So, no. um, yeah, I'm going I'm right along right with you with the Giants. I don't think you can go wrong. And, you, know, the whole you, also can't, thing. you also can't count out the, the, the managing factor. Um, oh, yeah. The Giants have the best manager, I think, in the game. Yeah, um, it depends on what you vote that on. You know, it, 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 strategically, yes, no doubt. You know, Bruce Bochy is a is an awesome. You know, but uh, personally, I in this, you know, Joe Madden is probably the best. Joe Madden's man. up there. Is Joe Madden's up there. Yeah, is one of the ones that I you know I I would love to play for Joe Madden. You know, he, he yeah. 
like you said, strategically wise, no, there's no one better than Bruce Bochy. Mm-hmm. It always seems like he picks the right spots. You know, almost like Tony Lawrence, the kind of thing. He always picks Pretty the much. right spots to, to get done what he has to get done. So, yeah, I'm going, you know, right along with you on that one. I think it's the first one we've agreed on the whole time. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this has been. Uh, the only other common playoff team is uh, the Blue Jays and the Indians. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. All right, headed out east now. Um, I'm going to go with the Mets because I. it's just hard for me to believe in the Nationals. It's just really hard for me to buy into that team. Um, and also the Mets have, in my opinion, the best pitching staff in Major, in Major League Baseball. Um they got a whole bunch of number ones. They don't have number twos and number threes. They got about three number ones. Um, the offense worries me a little bit because I'm not sure Curtis Granderson is going to have the same output he had in the second half of last year. Um, David Wright has to stay healthy, which is a huge question mark. Um, Cespedes, he'll be good, no doubt. Uh, Lucas Duda, uh, he's sort of off and on both on the field production and with health. Um, now, if they had the same production that they had in the second half of last year, this division isn't going to be close, in my opinion. But with the Nationals, um, I've never been a big uh, Dusty Baker fan. You know, what I think he did with um, with the Reds was, I think he underachieved about as much as he possibly could, given that team. Um Bryce Harper is probably going to be the MVP again. I, mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I just think they have a bunch of egos on that team, and that's baseball isn't run by egos. So I got the Mets. All right. Um, this one's kind of hard for me. Um, you know, it's and it's not. You know, like you said, I think the Nationals won't. They could. They could get a wild card. I think um, it would be really hard for them. Like you said, they have a whole bunch of egos. You know, you had. You know, Bryce Harper is the MVP. You know, he's a good player, no doubt. You know, I, you know, future Hall of Famer, I believe. The dude hits massive bombs. Mm-hmm. There's there's nothing, you know, that you can take away from him. But the problem is, like you said, they're egos. You have, you know, you have Jason Worth. You, you know, you, he's not healthy all the time, but ha- has a huge ego, you know. Jonathan huge. Papelbon. Look at Jonathan him. Papelbon is by far one of the uh, biggest assholes in the league. Is Jonathan Papelbon. Yep. It's, I agree. It's, I can't, you know, the guy think, oh, you know, he's top notch, but he was in Philly. He was god awful. Just, it wasn't even fun to, like, what? It was, the funniest part about watching him pitch tonight was waiting for the next person to hit another home run because he's already allowed four. When's the fifth one coming? Mm-hmm. It, it was terrible. But you're going to argue with a guy like Bryce Harper about if he's going to show enough effort. The guy hits. Yeah. 15 home runs every game. And who cares if he doesn't run one out to first base? He's literally getting your team. Sure. And you have Jordan Zimmerman, who I don't even know. You know, he's probably like 80 years old walking on crutches after the games. <laughs> they want him to play first base. I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, if he hits 30 home runs, I still don't think it'll be enough. No. You know, Wilson Ramos, I, I would say but outside of – Bryce Harper, Wilson Ramos is one of their better players. Oh, for he sure. For the fact that he's always there. He doesn't hit, you know, usually that well. Defensively, he's awesome. Plus, they don't even have a true shortstop. I'm currently no. watching the Cardinals and Nationals game right now. Who knows is starting a shortstop for them right now? The Danny guy who – yeah, who the guy who plays second base? I love Danny Espinosa. I wish the Cardinals would have traded for him a couple years ago. But that's your shortstop going into it. Like, yeah, there's just two. There's there's definitely not enough that's going on there. Plus, you had a guy Gio Gonzalez who's supposed to be the next big thing and hasn't done mm-hmm. nothing. You know, he hasn't been in the headlines ever. No. So, uh, at Nationals in my mind, I don't even think will make a playoff spot. I I agree. I I don't think – my big problem for me was between the Mets, like you said, and this is going to come as a surprise, but I the think Marlins. the Marlins might make mm-hmm. a good push. Um, you know, if Giancarlo Stanton can stay healthy and hit his 1,500 home runs <laughs> – and oh, wait, that's how long they go. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it, they're one of those teams that, you know, they're a clubhouse team is what I like to call them. You know, they, they all get along. 
Now, Jose Fernandez has kind of had a tiff, but that was with the front office. That mm-hmm. wasn't with players. Mm-hmm. Um, I, they all get along. They're you know they're almost like a big built family. Um, I think that, but I'm gonna roll with you on this one too. My home state believer is the Mets. I mean, you yep. joined the Cespedes fan. Uh, the Cardinals were surrounded by him all off season. Wish they would have signed him, but hey, I'm gonna yep. trust Piscotty in that, that reference. You know, give him a shot. But yeah, you can't doubt the Mets. You you have four number ones that are gonna do your rotation with yeah. Mets, Syndergaard, um, Degrom, Harvey. and Harvey. You know, four number ones right there that are gonna go out. You know, every day. I don't even know who's gonna pitch fifth. They might not even have a fifth starter. They're just gonna roll out. No, four's <laughs> gonna pitch twice. You know? I just you know. And the that's Mets a good problem mind. to have if you're the Mets. Oh, oh no doubt. Um, Wheeler supposed to come back at some point in time. That's a fifth number one. You know, <laughs> eventually. Um, so yeah, you know, I think the Mets are gonna ride this one out. You know, they got rid of da- uh, Daniel Murphy. Who I am so happy about. I didn't, you know, I was thinking about it the other day. Who on the Mets do I not really like? And there's now there's no one. But I did there's not no like Daniel Murphy mm-hmm. at all. You know, uh, when it came now to the playoffs, he hit a home run and he's got a bat flip all of them because you know he's you know number one on that team. You know, took it all for yeah, himself. He thinks he's he thinks he's Batista now. No, you're not, pal. Yeah, and I and I love bat flips. I think they're a good thing for the game. Excitement. You're trying to mm-hmm. you're trying to get a, a younger crowd into yep. the game, but you're not going to allow the players to have fun to act like little kids. I don't think that that's fair. Um, but really, you hit you know you hit like a second inning home run and you're going to bat flip like really, like that doesn't mean anything. No, um, exactly. So Daniel Murphy, I didn't like. So he's out. Neil Walker's in. Uh, he's yeah. just one of those guys you root for. You know. Yeah. Uh, his life, he couldn't, you know, his life almost didn't happen, you know, with the whole Clemente thing and his dad. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's just one of those guys you root for. When he was with the Pirates, definitely was a Cardinal killer. Um, but, you know, he's just one of those guys you got to root for, and um, I'm still going to root for him. But, yeah, my picks, the Mets, can't go wrong. And all central. This is the one we have the personal investment in. Um, yeah. Yeah. I have the Cardinals, but I'm going to keep it short because we're going to go into the Cardinals next week. Um, but I'm just going to say real quick that the Cubs, I have them getting a wild card spot, um, but they can't win the World Series in March. Um, as far as we know, until October, uh, the Cardinals are your reigning Central Division champions. Um, and, you know, they're bringing back Wainwright. You know, hopefully a whole a full year for Holiday when it comes to his health. Um, and if he and if the young guys produce, then I think it's ours to lose. But like I said, we'll go into that next week. But I got the Cardinals winning Central. All right. Um. Uh, I know this was a two race team for me. Uh, for the for the the top. You know, it's obviously a three race division, a two team race division. Um. Um. I'm going to go with you. I, I've been trying to, you know, basically what I've been trying to do is try and sway myself to the mm-hmm. Cubs because you can't doubt what they're doing. Sure. Um, but I just, uh, man, you know, they took Lackey, but that's really the only pitching one that they got. You know, yep. I still don't think Lester's going to perform down the way. Lackey had figured out a new way to throw last year with the Cardinals, so I think he's going to be a stud. But you got Jake Arrieta and Lackey, but then you have three other starters that are supposed to perform. So what I'm telling me is you probably win two out of the five days. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying they're going to go under 500 because there's no way. No. Through a pitching standpoint, I believe that's the case. You know, three out of five, you know, something like that. I think they're definitely going to go over 500. Um but I'm going to go with the Cardinals. And okay. um, I've been giving key players for all of them, and I know we're going into it. I'm just going to basically tease it for a minute. I think the main – and it's not a key player. It's key players, I think, is their middle infielders. Um, because now that Johnny Peralta is gone, you have Tejada, who's probably going to start it short. So Tejada and Wong have to get together and do their thing. Mm-hmm. But also I think you have to have uh, – if they're not doing it, if they haven't done it, they need to do it. But I think you have to get Jerko and uh, – Garcia doing it too. Um, I you have to get those. You have to get all four of them working. You know, work with each other. If they have to come in, you know, four hours before game time, just do it. Do it. Do it. But that, that, that like I said, it's not key player. It's key players. You know, that's going to be the key to that. But like you said, we're going to go into that more next week. So I'm not going to get too far into it. So um, yeah, that's my that's my thing for. This year, um, okay. for the I think Cardinals, but close second is the Cubs, no doubt. 
Wild card, uh, like I said, you got to give one to the Cubs. Um, they're just like the Astros, except I think better with the young talent. Um, we'll go into that again next week, the whole Cardinals-Cubs thing. Um, and I'm going to go with the D-backs because I just don't think there's another great team there. Um, I think you have great teams at the top with the Cardinals, Cubs, and Mets, and maybe the Giants. After that, it's a coin toss. Uh, I'm going to go with the D-backs. Um, not entirely confident, but I think they'll just sneak in at the end. Um, so, like with you, I'm going to go Cubs. are going to take the number one spot and get home field advantage at Wrigley. Um, and, I, you know, my my team and uh, my teams for the second one are really close with the D-backs and the Pirates. And I was originally thinking D-backs, but when we talked about them, you know, it did kind of hit me. You know, all of that's basically resting on those Oh, yep. it, it's a lot of his at least the offenses. I mean, the pitching has some has Shelby Miller and Zach Grinky, and that's good. But um, the offense is basically Paul Goldschmidt. Yeah, and and, and that was a huge. You know, I'm, I, you know, I, when we came started this video, uh, Diamondbacks were my second pick. Um, I was really confident in that. But you know, talking about you know, I, you know, uh, you know, I get all mad you know, watching TV all the time about how no one ever talks about the Cardinals and what they're doing, and. Um, you know, I'm going to go with the Pirates. You know, okay. uh, uh, Pirates, I don't think get a lot of hype around them. You know, they're, they're a pretty, um, they're above average for sure, but they go about it. You know, they go about their business um, like they should. You know, like professionals. Mm -hmm. There's not a, a player on there who acts like a child, and that's yep. what makes a huge thing for me. You know, that's why I, you know, I tell you, uh, Papa Bond is an asshole because he goes about it like a child. Yeah. You know, um, you're professionals. Kids look up to you. You know, you know, of course, you know, when you're in the locker room behind closed doors or on the field, you know, you can laugh, have a good time, but don't act like an idiot. Um, but, you know, the Pirates of that team, you know, they probably have in all of baseball the best outfield. Mm -hmm. I agree. In oh, all completely. of baseball. Not, not even close. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Sterling Marte is a stud. Cardinal killer for sure. Andrew McCutcheon, I don't, you know, there's no, 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 no introduction on him. Exactly. You know, there's no introduction for that. Polanco. Uh, you know, people were kind of riding him off last year, but I think he's gonna be awesome. Um, you know, he's 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 lanky, long and lanky, but he's got mm -hmm. power to all sure. fields. Um, Josh Harrison kind of had a bad year last year, but he's gonna start at second base for him this year. Um, Can't wait. I mean, it, it's gonna be interesting to see uh, Jung Ho Gong come back from injury and see oh, what yeah. he does because he oh, was he, he yeah. was he was super good last year. Oh yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, and he's gonna play third, I believe, for them. Yep. Correct. Um, their key player for me, um, I think John Jason is going to be fine for him. He's going to be their average first baseman, better than um, uh, Alvarez was for sure, um, defensively wise. You know, offense. Alvarez. You know, Pedro Alvarez. Yeah, he's a stud. Um, my key player for them though is going to be their shortstop, Mercer. Pretty Mercer. Okay. Um, and, and it's not that he's bad. He's average. He's a he's a guy that goes by stuff quietly. He plays awesome defense. He hits. I think he, he usually hits for average, not usually power, not too many home runs. Um, but uh, Mercer is a, is a uh, in my mind, a defensive beast. Um, you know, he's you know, he's kind of tall, lanky, you know, not your average shortstop real quick, you know, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. um, and even with their pitching rotation, you can't doubt, you know, Garrett Cole is an awesome. Garrett Cole's great. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that acts like a child, you know, you know, bitching and moaning about the money he makes, you know, even though that it's millions of dollars. Yeah. You know, That's a whole different um, discussion. You know, play the game for what it's worth. You know, you're playing the kids' game at the age of 25. You know, I stopped playing after high school. Do I miss it every single day? But I don't. You know, if someone's like, "Hey, I'll give you 100 bucks to go play a baseball game." Yeah, 100 bucks, dude. But <laughs> yeah. I don't need money to play. I don't even have to have money to play a baseball game for real. You know, if it was my career, yes. But don't bitch about that you're making three million dollars this year instead of five. Yeah. Like, you're still going to be fine. You can still buy cereal, for God's sakes. So, you know, <laughs> but he's going about it as a child, and he, but he's a he's a beast on the pitcher, on the pitcher's mound. You know, he kills the Cardinals. Yep. You know, um, but like I said, they're one of those, they're club, another clubhouse team. You know, they don't they go about their business. They know what they got to do. They all get along. It's a real tight-knit group. And, you know, like I said, Pirates and Cubs are my – no, same thing as last year. So you're going uh, same thing as last year, three, the top three in, in the NL Central? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, okay, no doubt. then uh, let's start with your World Series prediction. Uh, give us the two teams and who you, who you think will win. Briefly. All right. You know, this is really hard. Um, you know, we've mentioned a lot of good teams. Um, 
there always seems to be teams that people take because of the the, the methods that they've gone about doing and you know stuff like that. Um, I don't think the Mets will make it again. They're just you know yes, I think they'll win that division hands down, but they just don't have enough there for me. Um, okay. I'm honestly gonna go for this for the NL. Um, I'm gonna go Cubs. You know, I'm feeling the Cubs uh, fever right now. You know, the rivalry with the Cardinals. Uh, I definitely don't want to pick the Cardinals. You know, homer thing. You know, everybody wants to do that. Yeah. I think that they're gonna be good. I think the Cubs and Cardinals this year is gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I'm going Cubs, and then for my AL, I'm gonna go Royals. I can't take away from what they did. They deserve a right to defend their crown. Three times. Uh, it was three, three times in a row, huh? Interesting. Exactly. It was it was fun to watch them. You know, uh, I think they're pushing even harder this year to get to where they got to go. So, yeah, I'm going, you know, uh, Cubs and Royals. And then I think, I think the Royals are going to win it. Uh, I was thinking you're going to break the curse in the Cubs. No, it, it'll be good. It'll be a fun series to watch, no doubt. I just can't. The Cubs are coming together now. You know, last year they came together as a team. You know, the Royals have been – you know, their key players were drafted all in the same year. They yep. all came up together. You know, they all know what's going on. I just can't doubt the camaraderie that they have between all of them. Um, yeah, I'm definitely going – you know, I'm going Royals for that one. Uh, okay. But, but nonetheless, good season to the Cubs if they get that far. You know, congrats. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's you – know. I am uh... – I'm sort of the opposite with you and the Mets. I, I, I think they do have enough. Um, whether they will or not is a whole different story, obviously. But the, the, that pitching to me is just, I mean, I feel like it's just going to walk right through the playoffs. Um, at first, I was sort of on the fence about the Cubs. Um, but then I was thinking, uh, good pitching beats good hitting. So I'll take the Mets just because just of that fact. But I could entirely see the Cubs getting there. And if they get there... I wouldn't be surprised if they win it all. I'd be sad, but I wouldn't be entirely surprised. Um, in the AL, I'm going to pick the Rangers. Um, I think if the top of that rotation can stay healthy and 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 perform as they should, um, as their talent would indicate, then uh, it's going to be. I, I think the Rangers, and then the offense. Um, if they could have the same offensive output as last year, but then just insert you Darvish in the pitching rotation. <laughs> Um, I got the Rangers, although I was tempted to also pick the Astros um, just because, you know, the same reasons as the Cubs. They're just really young and really good and really talented. But I'm going to go with the Mets over the Rangers. Like I said, I think good pitching beats good good hitting. Um, so that's, I mean, I'm probably going to be entirely wrong. It'll probably be um, two teams we never even mentioned today. Um, probably. Um, which is but usually how predictions go. Yeah, my thing with the Mets, like you said, usually pitching does be good hitting. But the problem is, is it doesn't matter if you have pitching because you have to score runs. And to me right now, right. The only, I I can fully believe that's going to score any runs. Yeah, obviously, David Wright's going to score runs. No Walker's going to hit home runs. You know, and he's going to score runs. But right now, the only person I believe in that if you need a key run is going to be Cespedes. Like, yeah, that, run, that, was my, that, that was my that was my hit. That was my worry with them was – or that was the reason I almost picked the Cubs was because the Cubs, I think, are more well-rounded, but the Mets pitching is just so hard for me to ignore. Um, if they can just score enough runs, then I think their pitching can hold basically any sort of lead. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and like you said, you know, Giannis is, but just can't run the bases and hit at the same time. Um, like I said, David Wright's going to drive in runs. You know, he's he's been a mainstay for them for a long time. Uh, Neil Walker's gonna score runs. Lucas Duda's probably gonna hit around 25 home runs. But the problem is, is that you're you're usually the guys that do really well in the regular season aren't that good in the postseason. It's yeah, and that's your, just sort of the magic. Is. That's just sort of the magic of the postseason. You know, you have guys like Daniel Murphy coming out that no one really has, has ever paid attention to, and all of a sudden he's he's starting to rake. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you do have a point. I mean, even like a guy like Steven Piscotti, who had three home runs against the Cubs. He was good in regular season, but he wasn't, you know, that good. And yeah, it, it's just sort of the thing where guys have a have a sense of coming out in the postseason. Um, who knows if the Mets will do that? But I, I I think the pitching could. But I think the offense would have to lead them there. But the pitching would have to win the World Series. That's just my and opinion. that and that's a good you know I, the, a good reason I picked the Royals 
because they've been there, they've done that. You know, they've been there now twice in mm-hmm. two years. I think a third year, they'll they know what they're doing. You know, they can handle that limelight, and that's one of the big reasons I said the Cubs won't. I don't think will win because the Cubs the Cubs got that far, but I think that that the whole idea of you know 1908, you know, oh we're the first team since then, you know, you know, you know that has a good a real good chance of winning it is I think will overcome some of them. Um, you know, uh, I still think Anthony Rizzo is going to do his thing. I think he'll, he'll be second in MVP again. I think Bryce Harper will win it with Rizzo being very close second. Yeah, uh, I, you know, Rizzo is going to do his thing. You know, he, he I don't think he'll get scared. Chris Bryant's going to hit massive home runs. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he'll be okay. My big thing is short. You know, where you're going to put him in the outfield, he's a defensive liability. The guy can hit, but he's going to hit in the postseason for you. Is my yeah, thing. He, yeah, he's like – to me, he's like Matt Holiday. He's about as ungraceful as it gets out in the outfield. But when he's but when his offense is on, he's I mean he's going to hit so many home runs so far. Um, it's almost I mean it's a question of do you want to sacrifice that? Exactly, they're uncoordinated like monkeys humping a doorknob. You know, you really don't want to trust. I I don't trust Matt Holiday in the outfield. I don't either. I don't, I, you know, and on a routine play, if I, you know, fly ball and stuff, he's, you know, he's great. I've seen some balls that get past him that shouldn't. You know, he's a, a walking Hulk. That's just too massive. But, yeah, you know, that's, you know, I don't think you can go wrong. Um, a quick programming note for our, our viewers. We're going to start next week um, with our previews for, uh, for the Pirates. We're going to start with the Pirates, and then every series we'll be doing a preview. Um, we're also going to do a podcast next week um, that, that previews the Cardinals and sort of wraps up the spring. Uh, we'll be getting more into the Cardinals specifically, um, ditching all these other previews that we probably have gotten wrong. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, we'll be starting uh, hopefully next Saturday, next Sunday. Um, and if you would like, uh, shoot us questions, comments, concerns, uh, analysts or criticisms, analysis on Twitter and Facebook. Um, post post any comments to our page uh, so we don't get bombarded with instant uh, IMs. Um, and then we'll, we'll get back to you, and we love to feature you on our shows. Um, do you have any closing comments, Alex? Uh, the only thing I got is, like you said, we want to we want to make you guys feel like you're a part of the show. This isn't just two you know idiots grab on stuff for a little while. You know, we don't know everything, obviously. We want to hear your guys' predictions. We want you to be – we want you to come back and feel part of the show so we have a chance to shout you guys out. You know, um, we're going to – on Facebook especially, we're going to use your name because that's what comes up unless you put something in there, what else you'd like to call – what you'd like us to call you. But on Twitter, I'm assuming we're just going to use your handle. Correct. Um, um, uh, Paul's running the Twitter side. I'm kind of on the Facebook side. Um but you know, we want you to come back. We want you to feel a part of it. You know, this isn't uh, this is a, a, an audience-oriented show. Um, we're doing it from our uh, bedroom, for God's sake, we're not some studio. You know? Yeah, um, this is a, a very low-budget uh, operation. And, and that's fine. I don't, you know, I don't need cameras, lights, all this kind of crap. You know, we just want you. Know, we want you guys to feel part of the show. And I, you know, I can't wait to see where this goes. Um, I'm ready to answer some questions the best that I can to my ability. And if we shout out something that's not true, I want you to point it out. You know, I want you to prove us wrong. You know, tell us what we did. You know, if you want to criticize us and tear us to high hell, man, you you have our blessing because we, uh, one, we want to get better, and two, we want to hear your opinion. And and that's the biggest thing. We want to hear you guys' opinion. What you think? Um, obviously, if you make predictions on all the divisions, we can't ramble off your predictions. You know, from everybody. But, you know, if you got one division that you feel strongly is going to do it this way rather than what we said, then go ahead and put it on there. We'll read it off. Uh, we'll write them down, and we'll read them usually on the next podcast. We'll shout you guys out. Um, and that's another thing I want to make very clear is when we get uh, the live stream up and we're able, you guys are able to talk to us, um, please do not fill the chat with uh, shout-outs. Um, I'm not going to sit there and look at the chat the whole time and, you know, go, hey, Rodney, shout-out to you. You're awesome. I don't know you. I don't know if you're awesome. You know, you're just, you know, blasting me on YouTube. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you are. If there's a Rodney out there, I'm sure you're awesome. But uh, just don't fill it up with shout-outs. Uh, you know, Let's we're not going to You know, yeah, we're here to talk baseball. We're not here to go through the list and click on the audience and, you know, who we're choosing to shout out today. The thing that I'm talking about the shout outs, we're going to write down your questions. We'll answer a few of them uh, right when the show kicks off. The way you guys get, you know, kind of out there. We'll try not to use the same people over and over again. Um, 
uh, that, you know, the thing, you know, tell your friends, tell your family, tune in. If they're Cardinal fans, if they're baseball fans, we're going to try and, uh, I'm going to try and hit on a little bit on all the teams, you know, a little bit. Um, not too much, probably not the American League too much, um, but a lot of the National League, um, you know, we'll keep you up to date on uh, the American League, totally. you know, where our standings are, uh, but uh, we're not going to go into too in-depth. Um, and another thing I got going out is uh, it's one of my favorite players last year in David Ortiz. Uh, dude's a beast, been a beast for a long time. Uh, shout out to you um, on a great career, future Hall of Famer. Um, the bad flips, I can't doubt. You know, I'm not going to tell you you can't do it. You're too big for me. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, congratulations. And uh, um, hopefully you get to ride off in the sunset with a World Series championship. That would be awesome. But shout out to you and shout out to the fans. I can't wait to see you guys and uh, hear you guys' feedback. Um, it's going to be a great year. And uh, as always, go Cardinals. Look for us uh, next week where we will be producing more content uh, on a fairly, fairly regular basis. Uh, but, yeah, we will see you guys uh, next Saturday and next Sunday.